गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई एम श्रेया झा एंड आई विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग द टॉपिक ऑन इलेक्ट्रो ऑक्टोग्राफी सो दीज आर द कंटेंट्स फर्स्ट आई एल इंट्रोड्यूस द कॉन्सेप्ट देन आई टॉक अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रो ऑक्टोग्राफी पोटेंशियल देन द प्रिंसिपल आर्ट एंड रिशियो फंक्शंस एंड एप्लीकेशंस द वेरियस एप्लीकेशंस दैट इज हैज uh the advantages the challenges and limitations and the future directions okay so um as we know electro oculography oculo means eye so electro oculography is a technique that measures the corneal retinal scanning potential that exists between the front and the back of the human eye so it is between this as we can see the cornea that is the the eye acts as a dipole over here so as we can see the cornea is a positive side and the retina or the, and the fundus uh, ocular fundus that is a uh, negative side so we can place electrodes around the eyes and we can capture the movements which uh, can uh, be translated into electrical signals and we can uh, actually we can detect eye positions uh, and which can lead to detection of eye disorders and we can even control devices with such eye movements now coming to the most important part is the range of the electrooculographic potential so the uh, range of eog is between 0.05 to 3. millivolt in humans and it is really uh, it's linearly proportional to the eye displacement now coming to the principle of eog so as i mentioned in the previous slide that the eye acts as a dipole in which uh, the uh, cornea that is a positive part and retina uh, or the fundus that is a negative part now uh, we know electrooculography means tracking the movement of the eye so first what we do uh, as you can see in the figure below the eye is moving 15 degrees to the left so when the uh, eye moves 15 degrees to the left or as we term it as a left case so the cornea it approaches the electrode near the outer canthus of the left eye so what does canthus mean canthus means the two uh, points of the eye like we can see as a circle so the circle has a left and the right point so that 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 is known as a canthus so for the left case the cornea approaches the electrode near the outer canthus of the left eye and that results in a negative trending change in the recorded potential difference as we can see in the graph below for the right case the cornea approaches the electrode near the inner canth inner canthus of the left eye and that results in a positive trending change in the recorded potential difference now coming to the most important part that is the arden ratio why do we need the arden ratio we need the arden ratio so that we can get a ratio of the light peak to the dark graph now uh, as we know that the retina it has photoreceptor cells uh, known as rods and cones so um, uh, when when we when the human eye is subjected to a, a, a dark room that is for 15 minutes and it is also subjected to light for 15 minutes the rods are responsible for the dark vision and the cones are responsible for the right uh, for the light vision so when it is when the human eye subjected to the uh, to the dark room to the uh, to the darkness uh for 15 minutes within 15 minutes uh at the end of it at the end of the process it hits a peak it hits a dark graph and uh, same goes for the light peak the light peak happens between uh, around 7 to 12 minutes so this ratio is taken and uh, the value that we get that determines whether there is a discrepancy in the patient or not so if the value is uh, like as it is mentioned if it is 1.85 or higher it is normal if it is between 1.65 to 1.85 it is uh, sub normal and it, if it is below that then there is a problem and that needs to be addressed uh so as we know electrooculography records the eye movements so it is very important to understand the several movements that the eye has so first we have the vestibular movement the vestibular movement means that uh if the head rotates but the eye will be fixated on a certain object as it is written for clinical test fixate an object by moving head sacket sacket means 
रैपिड मूवमेंट लाइक रैपिड रिफिक्सेशन टू एक्सेंट्रिक स्टिम्यूलाइ इफ लाइक इफ देर आर टू फास्ट इफ देर आर टू ऑब्जेक्ट इफ देर आर टू ऑब्जेक्ट सो देर इज अ वॉलेंट्री मूवमेंट बिटवीन टू ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड स्मूथ परसूट स्मूथ परसूट मीन्स द it it is it is a conjugate i movement so for example uh, an object is moving and the i is uh, following that moving object so at that time we record this movement that is a smooth pursuit and vergence vergence means that uh, the i moves to the opposite directions uh, while observing the objects and that's how vergence is measured so it is a disconjugate movement as it is mentioned so the only difference between smooth pursuit and vergence is that smooth pursuit is a conjugate movement it moves together and this discon- and vergence is a disconjugate movement it is a slow movement to maintain binocular vision now coming to the functions of eog it uh, enables a measurement of ocular motility that is a, a free movement or the normal movement of the eye it aids the diagnosis of eye movement disorders which is very important that is a nystagmus nyst in nystagmus what happens is that the eye uh, it goes up and down or it can go left and right and there is no control on the movement so such a disorder is diagnosed through eog it can also be used to assess visual fatigue it can also be used to assess the blink rate and vigilance levels vigilance levels is a sum total of this like whether we have a visual fatigue or uh, suppose there is a problem with blinking uh if there are dry eyes or there are certain other problems so that is also monitored by the vigilance levels and uh, also it is non invasive so it's very important tool in studying eye physiology now coming to the most important aspect of uh, uh eog that is in the applications so first application is the ophthalmology so ophthal in all, ophthalmology it helps in evaluating visual acuity assessing retinal function and detecting eye diseases such as glaucoma and retinitis pigmentosa so what is visual acuity acuity means that uh, the eye is able to distinguish between various shapes various directions so it is uh, basically the uh, the ability of the eye to uh, distinguish and interpret images properly so if that is not happening or if the retina is damaged so eog gives us the uh, a very valuable information for uh, further treatments uh, now coming to the human computer interaction so in the field of human computer interaction it can be used as alternative input uh, modality so by tracking the eye movements we can control devices we can navigate interfaces uh like by uh, retina detection and then we can interact with vis- uh, virtual environments and uh, it also it, uh, it is also very important for people who are specially able it can also used to be uh, control wheelchairs and other devices so that uh they can uh, actually become more self sufficient uh now applications in sleep research um in uh, for, for sleep research a very important aspect that is the rapid eye movements uh, this is associated with dreaming so if uh, this can be if, if the sleep patterns if the sleep patterns and the rapid eye movements uh, it can be detected and sleep disorders can be detected so uh, the impact can be analyzed on the uh, and the various factors can be analyzed and we can also study sleep physiology and it it can contribute to advancements in uh, medicine uh, applications in neurology okay so here we assess the ocular motor function and in the diagnosis of neurological disorders so uh, for patients suffering from parkinson's disease or multiple sclerosis eog is a very important tool for the neurologists so that they can uh, contribute to the further treatments because it is uh related to the to the movements of the eye the pathways are very important in this analysis now coming to the advantages of eog the most important points are that uh, eog is non invasive it is cost effective and it can be easily integrated into existing setups uh 
it provides high temporal resolution high temporal resolution means that the uh, suppose there is a particular site and that image is being detected that uh, again and again and it it gives us a very good resolution so that we can understand that uh, whether the the person has is suffering from some kind of a neurological disorder or an eye disease and uh, this can also uh, be valuable to for research for clinical uh, applications and for human computer interaction but we have certain challenges and limitations so there can be problems related to electrode placement so if the electrodes are not placed uh, they are not placed properly as mentioned in the first slide like uh, the like in the proper position of the cornea and the fundus then we will get faulty results then individual variability then there are there are lots of factors or the biological factors that uh, that actually perturb the results and artifacts or the noises that can cure, uh, affect the accuracy of eog measurements and also the most uh, difficult or the most uh, limiting element over here is the horizontal eye movements so uh, eog can only assess horizontal eye movements and not vertical eye movements so we need to interpret this very crucially so that the data comes correctly and for uh, the it for the future directions it is very promising um, like we have wearable technology and signal processing algorithms they they make eog more accessible and accurate and uh, in today's world with uh, a surge in uh, depression and other mental health disorders EOG is a very very important tool because it helps in emotional state detection it helps in cognitive load assessment and brain computer interfaces so with the ongoing developments EOG can revolutionize many fields all at once so to conclude uh, electrography is a very powerful technique that is dependent on the physiology of eye movements and uh, it has a plethora of uh, applications despite its limitations it has a lot of uh, potential to actually provide us with a lot of possibilities